Today we're covering 15 must-start players for the season opener on Thursday night, which has the Detroit Lions traveling to the Kansas City Chiefs. We're covering guys that you may want to start on your fantasy team, you may need to start on your fantasy team, and players you need to look at. And then we'll also have a video like this for the Sunday slate as well. So make sure you hit that subscribe button because you need to know who to start, and we're going to be doing this every single week on top of the waiver wire videos, on top of the deep dives, and everything else. But let's dig in. Let's take a look at this. First thing we want to look at is the spread, and this changes throughout the week. This was from last night when I was pulling everything together, but we have a 53 and a half over under. The day prior is around 54, and this is going to move as the week goes along as people get their bets in. It's not about the number, but it is about the number. The numbers telling us is that the over under is kind of high and that Vegas is expecting a shootout. This is pulled from DraftKings. You can pull this number from any betting site. They're a little different, but they're always pretty close to the same. Again, a 53 and a half over under means that they're expecting this to be a high scoring game for it being the first game of the season and on a Thursday night. Usually Thursday night games can be a little crazy. They can be a little off the chain. With that being said, that number indicates that there could be multiple players making an impact for fantasy football, scoring high numbers, exceeding expectations due to the game script and everything else. The spread indicates that this could be a tighter game. We got a spread of five, which is about average. Usually they're about one or two, or if it's a blow, it could be pushing towards double digits. They're expecting the Chiefs to win by a little bit here, but we're expecting a high scoring game. Both teams should be moving the football, as we know from last year. Next, we got to talk about Travis Kelsey because he's the elephant in the room. We're waiting for more information to come out, but what we know is he hyperextended his knee. Nothing super serious yet. Yet, they're still doing more tests. Probably by the time you watch this video, you probably have more information. And if you have it and you see it on Twitter or something, just let us know in the comments below. But you're just waiting to see what happens. More than likely, he's not playing in this game. That's kind of what I see when I read the tea leaves from social media, from the news posts. But if he does play, good luck to you. If you start him, good luck to you. I have no idea what would happen if he plays a couple snaps, comes back to the sideline. That could be in the cards. When you're looking at the waiver wire for a backup tight end for another one, look at the matchups, look at the over-unders, look at the targets going to that tight end's way, see what could happen, just stream for the matchup of the week. And usually you want to chase games where you think the game script is going to go nuclear. You don't want to chase slow volume games, especially at the tight end spot because... If you're not a top-tier tight end like Kelsey or Mark Andrews or one of the other top guys, then you're really going to be very volatile from week to week and very game script dependent. So why not, when you only got a couple of jabronis to pick from off the waiver wire, just pick the game script and move from there. If you need help with individual guys, just drop that in the comments below. But we got to go to the must-starts. Pretty simple here. Patrick Mahomes, you're going to start him. You drafted him to start him, and you're going to start him in a matchup like this. Amon Ross St. Brown, the same thing. DraftKings has him pegged at around six and a half catches, so you can bet the over or under on that on the player prop. But that's an indicator that they are expecting him to get a fair amount of workload. No other receiver or running back in this game is pegged. For that much or even more. So nobody's really in his range. When it comes to the over-unders. For the reception total. They're expecting him to go nuclear in this game. And that makes sense. Given the projected game script. Jameer Gibbs is another guy. I'm looking at ranks from other websites. He's ranked around RB11. RB12 range for the week. Among running backs. And they're expecting him to give you a 30 spot. In the receiving game. And a 37 spot in the rushing attack. That's 6-7 to seven fantasy points. Just in yards, not counting catches or touchdowns. So they're saying they're expecting him to give you some production. Are you betting over? Are you betting under on that? But Jameer Gibbs is expected 
to have a breakout game this week. We'll see if that happens. But considering how he's being ranked, how everybody else is ranking him, how this game script looks like, Jameer Gibbs looks like a guy you're going to want to put some chips on. Going to the fringe starters, and we're going to individual teams here, the Lions and the Chiefs. And the thing about fringe starters, these are players that you're probably starting on most teams. But, however, how your team was structured coming out of the draft, you may have more running backs. You may have other wide receivers. You might have pounded wide receiver, and Sky Moore's got to sit. You might have pounded running back, and Pacheco's got to sit. And you also got a couple good receivers. That's why they're fringe starters. This is not because they suck or anything like that. It's just how teams are structured but they might be a must-start for you. Isaiah Pacheco, I feel good about him. I feel really good about him in this matchup, especially if Kelsey's out. I imagine he's going to be using the run game. The athleticism's there. They're pegging him for around 50 rushing yards. That's an over-under. He may go under, he may go over, but they're expecting he'd be somewhere close to that. That's what they're saying with the prop. So I'm expecting this game script to really help Pacheco here, and they're expecting the Chiefs to win by five or so. With that being said, they're going to have the lead later in the game, so they're going to use the run game, which means they're going to be using Pacheco. I like Sky Moore too. If you're looking for a breakout wide receiver, maybe you're in a deeper league, need somebody for the flex spot, but you need to move your flex spots from Thursday into your starting lineup so you have more wiggle room in the back half of the week. Remember that, but 40 Five yards is pegged for him in the passing game. Pretty high end up there. And you want to take note of Sky Moore. However, where he went in drafts, you may have other wide receivers you like better. Some studs. And I understand that. That's why they're fringe starters. Jarek McKinnon could be a sneaky fringe starter here. Really depends on the routes ran. He is used more in the passing game, especially compared to Pacheco. With that being said, he might get some of Kelsey's targets. The short, the intermediate targets, the ability to explode out of the backfield once he catches a check down is really impactful for this offense. We could see him turning and burning some yards in this game, but really you don't want to bet on it either. But if you want a running back that could sneak some points for you, it could be Jarek McKinnon. Kadarius Tony, is he going to be back? Is he going to be on the field? We're going to have to watch reports. We're seeing some news coming out that he might be back. And if he's on the field, you want to be interested in him because he does have a history in his offense from last year. He could see some targets come his way. He's good after the catch, but he also could be monitored. He's a fringe start because you don't know what's going to happen. I look at him as more of a gamble, though. Next, for the Lions, I got David Montgomery. Depending how you went running back, he might be your RB2. Or he might be your RB4 or so. It depends on how that running back position went for you in the draft. However, he's got a line of 52 and a half. Look for the Lions to use him around the goal line. Should be getting some touches. Also can catch the ball in the backfield a little bit. This is a good, good line to bet on some of these players here. Because we got a high over under. This is going to be an explosive game to explosive teams. Both these teams should be rolling in fantasy points. I'm not going to sit David Montgomery unless I'm stacked at running back. And some of you guys probably are. And then going to the sneaky starts, these are the guys that could exceed expectations. And pretty much if you're lining up running routes for the Chiefs, you got that opportunity. If Kelsey's out, Noah Gray is a guy that could do that. You may want to lead on him or one of the other tight ends on waivers. It's whatever you want to do. Justin Ross, Rache Rice. Those guys are going to be in and out and packaged players, and we're going to have to see how the targets line up. But if you want to gamble, I would always want to gamble on Chiefs players. That's the one thing because they can spread the ball around, and it's an explosive offense. And Clyde edwards lair he's still on the team, and he could sneak some carries and be a guy that can be impactful as well. So you don't want to forget about him, but you're more than likely not starting him because he's been a Debbie Downer for a long time now. Also, going to the sneaky starts here for the Lions, I like Sam Laporta. I like him a lot. And usually, second-round rookie tight ends, they don't hit. We've had like two hit in a rookie year forever for, for the lifetime of tight ends in the NFL. So the odds of him really hitting isn't that good, but the line's pretty good here. They're indicating that Sam Laporta should be getting some opportunity here with a three and a half over under on the reception total. And I have a feeling that he's going to be used pretty well too. We've got Jamison Williams out for a bit. He's a good receiving option at the tight end spots. Kind of comps a little bit to Dalton Kincaid in some ways. 
So really, he could be like the wide receiver two, wide receiver three in this offense, and he could give you some passing production. That being said, Marvin Jones is a veteran wide receiver who could just sneak fancy points because he's nuanced, he's got ball skills, he's a veteran. This offense pushes the ball downfield. If they're covering Amon Ra, they got to go to somebody else. Amon Ra gets 30 40% of targets, 60% of targets got to go somewhere else too. Marvin Jones could be getting some love here. Good over-under, good explosive game here. This is a game script you want to bet on these sneaky players. But those are 15 players that we're looking at from this game that you could potentially start. Some of them are must-start. Some of them are sneaky. But when you have a high over-under, 50 or higher really, you really want to look at that matchup because they're going to be players all over the place scoring fantasy points. Some of them will hit. Some of them will bust. But... If the game script is hot, that means there's going to be a couple players that are going to be hot because if these teams are scoring points, that means some players in this game are scoring fantasy points, and that's something you want to look at. This is an exciting game for the opener, and I'm excited to watch it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any questions, drop it there. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Catch you on the next video.